cards one so in this video here we will be critically analyzing the artist artwork arts work fly hey guys welcome back to my channel this is your favorite art teacher art reply and today we will be critically analyzing artworks this is not my information I got it from TVJ's channel so if you want to check out the long version head on over to their YouTube channel but on here it is short and spicy so let's begin art reply why do we critically analyze artworks to hear what it helps you to highlight the things that are important about artwork and help you make more meaningful connection to your work now how to critically analyze artworks hmm. you are going to do an impeccable job what do I mean that's my mnemonic for describe analyze interpret and judge do an impeccable job yes this procedure is the same as examining the work of art in a critical way. We're going to be analyzing the work done by Lennox Koch entitled Curry Gold Cricket. Now, we want to start with description. Do an impeccable job. D for description. Now, on the description, you're going to do what? You're only going to state what you see. You're stating only the facts. No make up anything here. So you're going to be identifying these strings. You're going to be identifying the art form. What is it? Is it a rock? Is it a plane? Is it a board? Is it a painting? Is it a sculpture? Okay, medium, what is it made of? Talking about the material here for the artwork. Subject matter, identify and typify objects, persons, place, events. Look at this piece, you're getting ideas already. And you're going to be combing the pa painting from foreground to background. And then we look at the style, style or art movement the artist follows. And then lastly, on the description, we're looking at form. And form here don't mean like a geometric form or something, some illusion of depth on a flat surface. No, we're talking about the formal elements that compose the artwork. Now, here are some points from what we mentioned before. So this is a painting, as we said before, done by Lennox Cole, titled Curry Gold Cricket. So that is what it is. It is a painting. And it was done with what? Acrylic on canvas. That's a medium. The setting looks like a place in the rural area. The figures seem to be engaged in an outdoor activity. That's a subject matter right there. The objects and images were painted in a realistic way. The style portray realism. Of course, we're talking about the style right there. And then the elements of color, form and texture stands out. Proportion perspective and balance are the dominant principles evident of course the, those are the formal elements that i just mentioned there so we're finished with description we're moving on analysis now when you're doing the analysis you're still collecting facts about the work but this time you're going to say how how are the elements and principles used how did he use the line how did he use the color all right so we're going to look at it so before we said the dominant elements were form and value colors and texture now how we looked at the form and value all right images and objects were rendered in a realistic way the use of tonal gradation show evidence of light and shadow that's for the form and value no for the colors Use of vibrant colors such as red, blues, and greens. That's how the colors were used. They were vibrant and rich, right? The green textured area balanced out the work with the neutral colors of the ground. And then lastly, the texture. This is just for elements. Texture, visual texture enhances the surface. Now, visual texture is different from tactile texture. Tactile texture is the one you can actually feel. Visual texture is the one that you see right so visual texture enhances the surface such as the dry patch you get that feeling of dirt right here and the grassy areas and the feel of the skin of the, the figures and the folds of the fabric those things are texture in the artwork okay 
now the analysis continues. Now we're looking on the principles. All right? So the dominant principles that were noticed were proportion, perspective, balance, rhythm, and movement. Proportion. The varied size of the figure from foreground to background. So proportion has to do with size. So the size of the figures are varied. These are large, and as they move towards the background, they get smaller. And because of that, we get perspective. So there is spatial. You're feeling that you can go into the work and out. It's create distance on a flat surface. That's what perspective is. Or the illusion of distance on a flat surface. And then we look at balance. Very important to our artwork that the work don't look like part of it is toppling over to one side. So placement and the use of colors as well as images help to balance the work. And how is this balance? If we cut it down the middle, is it equal on both sides? No. So in this case, we say asymmetrical. So it's not symmetrical, but it's asymmetrical because everything seems to be dispersed into the work, allowing it to balance. All right? So it's asymmetrical balance and with emphasis on the batsman here. No, emphasis is also a principle, you know. But when you're looking on the work, it actually helps you. All of these other principles jump out and actually help to lead your eye towards this person right here. Look, everybody looking towards him. And look, it is as if everything here is surrounding him. Even the path lead your eye to that person in the middle bat in the work. So that is the emphasis of the work. All right? So we'll move on to rhythm and movement. Think is only music have rhythm and movement? No, not at all. Art has rhythm and movement. How this happened? Because of repetition. Look at what the, the road is doing to create that sort of movement. It's larger here and it gets smaller as it moves to the back. So it's taking you or taking your eyes into the artwork from foreground to background. And look at how these figures are placed in the work. Right? Your eyes moving from this figure, this figure, and it progressive, they get progressively smaller. And the repetition of color. So those things help to create the rhythm and movement in the artwork. Got it? So we're finished with analysis. Now, interpretation. What is happening in the artwork? What is the artist trying to convey? Oh, you're looking for the mood of the work, the message behind the work. If, now, if you're not really interviewing the artist, you can actually read up about the artist and not just look at the work and guess how to interpret the work. No, it's good that you find out a little background on the artist. So here it says Lennox Coke Artworks is based on a social commentary Jamaica cultural lifestyle. That's what he was looking at. Jamaica culture and lifestyle. The use of colors depict vibrant nature of the Jamaican people. Yes, we are a colorful people. Right? So here it is, these rich colors. Plus, we're in the tropics. So everything seems brighter on this side in terms of color. The scene is also reminiscent of activities engaging as a boy, as Lennox was engaging as a boy when he lived in Thornton, St. Elizabeth. Where after the, you know, during the summertime, during the cane reaping period, the youngsters would gather together, make their own toys and games for enjoyment and activities, you know, within the community. So that is the interpretation from the artist's perspective. Now, from your perspective now, what you actually think about the, the work, you're going to talk about the mood of the artwork. And I feel like the mood of this artwork depicts excitement. Uh, you have some little ones on the side jumping up, the others just looking and smiling. So they're cheering and looking along. I'm also getting a sense of community and oneness there. Like everybody, no matter how far you look, everybody's stopping to look on what is happening. Everybody's showing interest in the activity. This is a scene, not just in the rural area, you know, of Jamaica, but it happened here in the urban area. So I know you, you, you go through Kingston and you'll see the youngsters playing ball, right? Or when they meet to have a run a boat and then play some game. So this is my interpretation of this piece of work. Do I like it and why? Don't leave out why. Okay? So you can use three theories three theories you don't have to use all three but here are three suggested theories formalism 
imitationalism, emotionalism. First time you're hearing it, no problem, I'll explain. So under formalism, you're judging the work based on the use of elements and principles in the artwork. Elements, you know, like line, color, shape, texture, form, and principles are things like balance, emphasis, proportion, contrast, variety, and you know the rest. Okay? So you're judging the success based on the elements and principles. Or imitationalism. You're judging the artwork based on what you see in real life. Does a tree look like a tree? The person looks like a person, right? That looks like a pathway. This looks like grass. So you're judging how well this is the artist replicate real life on the surface. Emotionalism. Do I have to say it? It's the mood of the artwork. How it makes it feel make you feel that the artist do a good job in conveying that sort of emotion from the canvas or the surface to you so let's see what happens so judgment what do i think about the artwork do i like it and why so let us try and pick up which one is this one. So the painting seems to reflect a strong and vibrant energy from the rich use of colors. The layout and composition pull your eyes in and around the composition. Which one of the theories do you think we're using right here? We're talking about formal elements. Of course, it's formalism. And the next one. It is said that art imitates life. <laughs> Example of what make it through in this artwork are textures and the tones the surface of the objects and the images look as how they feel in real life so of course we are actually talking about imitationalism right here so the next part the mood this one is a giveaway huh? the mood of relaxation and enjoyment in one was conveyed not just through the expressions on the on the, the faces but the various poses of the figures right there of course it's emotionalism because we're focusing on mood right here and based on the statement made we know we're saying that this artist was successful based on all three theories now overall this artwork was relatable in my opinion this is successful painting done by the artist and you want to end with a statement like that in your opinion state the success okay we're moving on we have just done an impeccable job we describe analyze interpret and judge yay now guess what it's now time to critically analyze your own work please remember to like share comment subscribe and hit the bell so you can always know when i upload